All right. Hello, everyone. Beauty. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amar, and this is Joshi. Hi, I'm yeah. Joshi. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about our EVM compatible staking implementation. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so just a quick roadmap before we begin, we'll start out with an in introducing ourselves. And then after that, we'll give a short overview of the Moonbeam network stack. After that, we'll discuss the parachain staking palette design. Then we'll go into the Nimbus consensus framework, which Joshi wrote. And um, we'll end with a demo of, uh, of EVM compatible staking with the user story. Oh, also there's a link at the bottom of that slide to, to all of the slides. And that Joshi also posted a link in the chat. So you can click on either one of those. And there are more links throughout the slides. So if you want to follow them, that's your jumping off point. So hi, I'm, I'm Joshi. I was a high school teacher. I taught computer science for several years. And then I became a substrate teacher at Parity in the fall of 2019. That's where I met Amar. We worked on the substrate recipes together. So if there's any substrate developers, you might know that project. And I also started the substrate seminar. And I came to PureStake to work on Moonbeam in October of 2020. And since then, one main thing that I've worked on is this Nimbus consensus framework that we'll touch briefly on today because it's related to parachain staking. And uh, more recently, this set of pre-compiles that allows the EVM to work with parachain staking. That's what Amar and I worked together on. Outside of work, I have a young son, Forrest. He's also a Moonbeam fan. And I just thought I'd share him with you. So my name is Amar. I uh, started the Substrate Recipes at Parity in 2019. After that, I left Parity to build Sunshine, which is a bounty platform uh, written in Substrate. Then I went back to school and I finished my bachelor's degree in math from the University of Virginia. And I've been working on the Moonbeam dev team since December uh, of last year. And I like playing chess in my free time. That's like a fun fact about me. Yeah, so um, this is a short overview of the Moonbeam network stack. We're only going to focus, or we only really focused on the parts that are relevant to this talk. So the important parts are the runtime, and we'll be talking first about parachain staking and the functionality that it provides. And then we'll discuss the Nimbus consensus layer and some of the runtime logic that's used in the Nimbus consensus layer. And then we'll end with a demo that shows how we integrated staking precompiles to provide an interface for users to deploy their own smart contracts to interact with our staking palette. Next slide. Yeah, so um, in the Polkadot consensus model, there is one relay chain and there's many parachains. And Moonbeam is a parachain. So the relay chain negotiates the passing of messages between all of the parachains, and it unites them under a single consensus process. So naturally, based on this model, Parachains have fewer execution resources. They're limited as to what they can include in their runtime logic. So for that reason, that motivates a simpler, more efficient design for parachain staking as well as parachain consensus because we don't have the resources that the relay chain has. Next slide. Yeah, so just a, a short overview of the parachain staking implementation that we have in Moonbeam right now. Um, the main functionality that it provides is it enforces shared risk reward on chain between delegators and collators. And instead of using the, session, the sessions logic that's implemented in pallet staking, which is the relay chain staking implementation, we have, our, we have an analogous sessions logic and we, we basically have a new round every X blocks. And at the start of every round, we choose the top N collator candidates to be in the active collator set. And this set is filtered by the Nimbus consensus framework later on. I'll discuss that in a second. But um, once it's filtered, the, the valid block authors are logged in the author inherent palette. And these block authors are rewarded two rounds after they author blocks. And this implementation also features constant inflation, which is updatable by governance. So this is actually how um, inflation and interest rates are set in modern monetary policy. They don't really commit to an inflation schedule or an inflation curve. Rather, they provide forward guidance that communicates expectations based on how a constant rate is going to change. And we found that to be very simple to encode on-chain and implement. So we implemented that instead of encoding the substrate reward curve. There's links on the side. The blog post goes over more, more details why we wrote this implementation. Next slide. Yeah, so it's a very simple implementation. There's a bounded number of delegations per account. And the delegations, they have to be above a minimum. Um, which is five glimmer is the minimum set in our runtime right now. So they have to be above this minimum 
But other than that, you can have up to 25 delegations. And um, the way it works is uh, at the start of every round, the top end candidates by total backing stakes. So that's the self bond for the candidates, as well as all of the all of the delegations by their uh, delegators. Um, the top N are selected as active collators. Next slide. And Nimbus consensus is what filters this active collator set at each block. So it it basically provides a functionality to choose a pseudo random subset at each block of the block authors. And this is particularly useful in the context of front running and censorship because it's more difficult for collators to predict which block they will be allowed to offer. So this functionality prevents uh, DDoS attacks. It prevents any sort of planned attack by collators by making it more difficult for them to know which block they're going to author next. next yeah, one. maybe I'll just jump in and yeah. add that, that staking chooses these collators and you can think of them as these are our collators for this round for the next several blocks. And then the Nimbus filter acts on a block by block basis and says, these are the people who can author this specific block. And this is where Nimbus is customizable. Yeah, so Nimbus uh, is a is, it's a consensus framework. At first, you know, we we were thinking. I guess Josh, you'll talk more about the motivation, but it provides extensible runtime filters to select a pseudo random subset of that active collator set as the valid block authors for each block. And we've already implemented an oral style style filter, but other consensus protocols can be implemented via Nimbus because it's a consensus framework. Yeah, so I want to share a little bit of my experience writing this. We didn't really intend to write a consensus framework when we were developing Moonbeam. We just needed something that was going to work for our testnet. And so we started trying to use this classic implementation of Aura that most substrate chains that aren't pair chains use. And we found it needed um, a lot of work to fit into the pair chain framework. Substrate developers might know that it takes work to fit things into Cumulus sometimes. And uh, so we started to write something that was similar, but basically our approach at getting Aura in there. And as we did it, we decided, hey, maybe we can improve this. What if we add redundancy so that if an Aura node goes offline, there's a backup person to still alter the block, author the block? What if we add randomness so that you don't always know who's going to be the next author? And what we realized was you really don't want to have to redo all the hard work of fitting consensus into the parachain context for every one of these little changes. So in the same way that Substrate strives to be a framework for building blockchains, Nimbus strives to be a reusable and abstract framework for a more narrow focus of building parachain consensus engines. Uh, and that's we could have like a whole talk about Nimbus, but I think that's all I'll say so that we can focus on the demo today. Did, yeah, let's see. Okay, right. So I'm going to uh, do this demo. We're going to tell it as a story from the perspective of our character, Alex. Uh, I'm getting mic noise. I don't know if that's uh, Amar or Nate. That coming from me? Um, so, okay. So we're going to talk about Alice and she's uh, going to use some code that's based on this open pull request. This is what uh, Amar and I have been working on for like the last week and a half. And so you can check out the code yourself. So here's the story. Alice, as you can see from her resume, is a Solidity developer. She has skills in smart contract design. She's familiar with MetaMask and Remix and all the other great tools that you Ethereum folks are familiar with and that Kevin told us about earlier. And she's got experience building DAOs and participating in hackathons. She's a typical Solidity developer. One day, maybe today, Alice discovers Moonbeam. And she finds that the EVM is so familiar, just like Ethereum, and it's faster and less expensive than Ethereum. And it works with all the same tool stack that she's already familiar with. And Alice really starts to fall down the rabbit hole. And on the fall, she discovers other interesting things about Moonbeam, such as the Nimbus consensus framework or the parachain staking palette or cross-chain message passaging, passing that you can get in Polkadot ecosystem, but not in Ethereum. Uh, and our governance solution, which we're not really talking about today. And Alice decides to set to work using her existing Solidity skills that she already has. She works with all our standard Ethereum tools. And thanks to these pre-compiles that we wrote and that we're going to tell you about today, she can seamlessly interact with the Substrate palettes from her normal Solidity development environment. She doesn't even have to know about Rust or Substrate. So uh, being a skilled developer, Alice starts to read into the docs and uh, what she finds is that we, the Moonbeam team, have published this interface in Solidity code. And uh, it has some, some standard staking style functions like is nominator. So you can check if an account is a nominator. 
Why would we want that to be in Solidity versus Rust if the precompiles are written in Rust? Yeah, so that's a good question. So we don't have to do this. It would work fine if we just wrote our precompile. But the beauty is that Alice is a Solidity developer and she doesn't want to or need to learn Rust or know how this interface is implemented. All she wants to do is call it from her code. And so by wrapping it in a standard Solidity interface, we allow Alice to work solely in Solidity, not having to worry anything about our implementation. Thanks for asking. Uh, once Alice is familiar with the interface, she sets to work coding, she imports our interface, and she writes a standard contract. She calls it nomination DAO. This DAO that she's creating is going to nominate a collator in the parachain staking palette in, by the mechanism that we just learned about. I don't have time to talk about every line of code, even though I would love to, so let's just focus on the main function. Anyone can send money to the DAO at any time, and then anyone can call this update nomination function. And as long as the DAO has enough money to meet the minimum nominator stake, the sort of minimum nomination amount, then it will nominate all of that money toward the candidate that the DAO is pointing at. And so Alice thinks this is cool and she's wrote her code. Um, and by the way, the links to all the code are, are right here. So you can check them out yourself in full detail. And now she wants to put it to use. So she has a meeting with all of her friends and she explains how the DAO works in the way that I just explained. And she asks if they have any uses or want to get involved. And it turns out there's a perfect use case because currently on Moonbeam, there's one collator, the Queen of Hearts, who's heavily staked. She's a whale and she has a disproportionate amount of power. And Alice and her friends would like to pool their funds to nominate another candidate to work alongside the Queen and spread her power more evenly. So this is where I'll exit the slides and switch to the actual demo. Um, so uh, I have a Moonbeam chain running and I wanna start, this is a Polkadot.js. I wanna start by showing some data from parachain staking. Uh, and what we what we see here is that there are currently two people, two collator candidates. There's the Queen of Hearts who has 10,000 units and the little guy, Gerald is what we call him. He has 1,000 units. So he's a small fish compared to the whale. And Alice and her friends want to help bring Gerald's stake up to be closer to the queen. So Alice being a Solidity dev doesn't use Polkadot.js, she uses Remix. And what she's gonna do is deploy her DAO. And as we said, the DAO needs to know who they're going to nominate. So when we deploy it, we pass in the address that we're going to put. And this is 6BE. This is Gerald. This is our small fish that we're going to try to get staked more. So let's deploy so that's, this. That's calling yeah, a constructor when, when, you when you deploy it. Is that how that works? That's exactly right. And at deploy time, we're setting who is the one that we're going to be nominating. So I think I forgot to reset my account from my dry run. So let me just do that. This is the fun kind of stuff you do when you're working on dev networks all the time. Okay, there we go. So let's try to deploy that again. Yep. And so Alice deploys it and specifies Gerald as her target. So that's great. And what we want to do now is have all of Alice's friends contribute their small amounts of tokens and pool them together in the DAO. But uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to make one transaction and we're going to have Alice send a bunch of tokens into this DAO. So what we have to do is get the DAO's contract address because it's not Alice that's participating and staking directly. She's not nominating. She's giving money to the DAO and the DAO will nominate. So let's copy its address and let's send it some funds. And remember this, this represents a bunch of people contributing small amounts of funds. Let's just say 6,000, the Mad Hatter and the Rabbit and everybody else pooled their money to get, to get this much. You could even maybe think none of them were big enough fish to quite meet the minimum deposit. So this is a way for them to, to participate in staking. Um, okay, and now that the contract has some money, we can call its main method, the one that I showed you earlier, it's called uh, update nomination. So we'll call it, anyone can call this method even if they haven't contributed to the DAO. And it went through and so all the, you know, it feels like everything worked and it almost feels too easy because all I did was write Solidity code and use Remix. So maybe we better check from the Substrate perspective to make sure everything is, is on the up and up. So what we see is that Gerald has 6,000 more units. He used to only have 1,000, now he has 7,000. So all these people pooled their money in the DAO and nominated Gerald in the Substrate palette without even knowing anything about palettes or precompiles. Uh, and the other thing that we can see that I didn't show you before is that we can look at this um, nominator state and I'll just show all of them since this is a small network. 
And what we see here is that there's now one nomination. It comes from our DAO address and we're nominating Gerald in the amount of 6,000 tokens. So when you add that to the thousand he already had, that gives him his 7,000 tokens. So I really uh, wish, and maybe in a future session, I can walk you through all of these methods, write a DAO with you, show you all the methods in the interface. But for now, we just have to suffice it to say that Alice found these precompiles very useful. And really, there's nothing stopping any one of you here from being just like Alice. There's a bunch of other ideas. Here are a few that you're welcome to use or jam on. And Amar and I would be happy to consult with you afterwards about what these, you know, how these could be implemented or about your own ideas. Awesome. Yeah. We got it. I, sorry, guys. We do have to wrap up. So just a couple, another 60 seconds if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So just to conclude, um, the reason, yeah, we're so excited about this is because we're bridging the world of substrate and Ethereum. We can harness the speed, efficiency, and high performance of a native substrate runtime with our parachain staking implementation. But we also enable users to encode their own smart contracts. So we benefit from the composability and configurability of custom Ethereum smart contracts deployed in our local EVM. So uh, this, this really shows that the whole is better than uh, the sum of parts. And um, we get a lot from this combination. So I'm very excited to see what happens next, what you all bring. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Great job. Bye.